two scriptures and I'll begin to teach. Acts chapter 26, please. And verse 22. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. I want to share with you a mystery very briefly. This is the mystery that has been responsible for longevity of impact. Now for a foundation, God desires not only that we succeed, God desires not only that we advance, but he desires that we last. Are we together now? The challenge with many believers is that we start well, but we have not mastered the technology that causes men to remain. And so people rise, people do well, people excel, and then at some point in their lives, they seem to plateau and then they begin to decline. But the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light in ministry, in destiny, in career. It should be as a shining light that shineth more and more. In fact, the Bible says it this way, better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. Am I right on that? That means God is always concerned about the latter part of things. It should never be that we begin well in ministry, we begin well in destiny, we begin well in family, we begin well in career, and then we plunge and become in a sorry state. Unfortunately, this seems to be the lot of many believers. They start well with vibrancy, spiritually speaking, they start well with vibrancy career-wise and then at some point in their lives for whatever reason they seem to plateau they don't go down but they don't go up again then they get to a point where they begin to go down until they look worse than the state they were when they started the bible is full of people who finish well exceptional people who ran their race and finished well the Bible is also full of people who unfortunately did not finish well. I don't want to go through the, the story of people who did not end well in scripture. But I'm praying for you that in the name of Jesus Christ you will end well. That your life will become an inspiration to those who are coming after you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So let's go to the book of Acts. And I'll establish a few things and then we pray chapter 26 of acts and verse 22 do we have it projected okay so i'll read it from here and then um you follow carefully it says having therefore obtained help of god i continue on to this day witnessing both to small and great saying none other things than those which the prophets and moses say should come I'm interested in the A part. Just keep verse 22. It says, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. I continue. That means God has to help and assist a man to continue and remain. God has to help a man to have longevity of impact in life, longevity of impact in ministry. If a man does not obtain help of God, regardless how zealous, regardless how well-intentioned, I can tell you by the message of God, even in this work of the ministry, I have seen people with solid character. I've seen people with integrity. But for whatever reason, they did not obtain the requisite help from God. And they still felt like people who were full of compromise. I have seen a mystery in my life as a man of God. That under a certain condition, it seems like both good and bad experience the same result. The difference is the help of God over the life of a man. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. It says, they labor but they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. Are we learning tonight? It says the watchman watcheth but in vain. It is vain, it says, to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. But it says God giveth his beloved sleep. That if God does not help a man, there are times that your intelligence can fail. 
if God does not help a man, human connections are important, but human connections can be limited. If God does not help a man, you can have money, but you will be surprised at how many things money cannot do. If God does not help a man, you can have a good sermon and not have anyone interested in listening to you. If God does not help a man, you can be a man of character, but those who have the grace to help you will not even see you. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. It is of the Lord that showeth mercy. Who is learning already? Because we live in a world where it, we live in a celebrity age where people like to take the credit for the exploits they like to take the credit for the many things that happen around their lives there is such an obsession to be a celebrity there is such an obsession to be exceptional and there's nothing wrong in itself with that except that you get to a point in your life where you can believe that the results that you have now produced have come as a result of the vastness of your prayer life, the vastness of your word study life, because of the accolades that follow you academically. In as much as those things are not wrong, there is a life that powers those things to work. It is called the help of God. That without the help of God, you can be as sound intellectually as you can be. You will still fail in life. Without the help of God, you can be skilled and gifted. You will still be ignored. Without the help of God, you can be a man of God fast in scripture. And you will be surprised that your life will not go forward. You will be surprised that ministry will not go forward. There are parents who raise their children in a way that no child should be um, a tragedy after that kind of training. And yet almost all the children turn out to be a source of pain. It was not lack of discipline. And I've seen other people who did not make any investment in their children. And God meandered those children to ministries that midwife their training. It is not of him that willeth. You are Ebenezer, the helper of men. You are Ebenezer. Behind the exploits of men, exploits in ministry, behind the exploits of men, exploits in the area of influence, finances, and so on and so forth, I am telling you that there are laws to be obeyed. There are principles to be kept. I agree. But when all is said and done, there is a part of the equation of success that no man can feel. It is only the help of God that becomes the completer of that equation. Hallelujah. I would always say that there are times when you desire to catch fish as a fisherman. If you want to catch fish as a fisherman, the right place to be is the sea the right tool to use is your net and the boat but Peter in John chapter 21 being a professional fisherman had experience correct had the boat correct had the net correct was at the right location correct but he did not catch fish there are times all the variables are right and mysteriously you will not know why things are not working it looks to me like sometimes god allows those things to happen deliberately to remind you that he is beyond a principle to remind you that he is beyond a formula principles are powerful but there is an agency beyond them are we learning haven't obtained help from the lord i continue ministry to this day I continue career to this day we live in a world where we are embarrassed to declare before the nations that God is the reason behind our results we like to take credit for the things that God wrought through us and sometimes in doing so we push God out of the space 
because we make him look like he's a nuisance we this celebrity mentality puts us in a position where we want to receive the accolades if there is anything i have learned about god is that when you stand his way of receiving glory even if he's the one that blesses you or has blessed you to that position he will fight you god can fight something he once gave you because of the way you and that thing has interrupted him from being seen just because god gave you something does not mean he cannot become his enemy the enemy of god is anyone and anything that perpetually becomes an interruption to his being glorified that can be your gift that can even be your church god can fight good things he does not only fight evil god can fight good things if they become an interruption to his being glorified he will fight it let me tell you the truth there are many people's decline in life that is not entirely demonic they made up their minds to take the place of god in deuteronomy chapter 8 he began to caution the nation of israel and he says let it not be that when you have built houses let it not be that when all of these wonderful things have happened you will say in your heart my power and the might of my hand has gotten me these riches then he says thou shall remember the lord your god you see look at me beloved something happens to believers when we step into the realm of success it makes a lot of sense to seek god when you are failing it makes a lot of sense to cry and fast and pray when things are not working it makes a lot of sense to give when you are hoping that you will rise but there is a weakness in men please follow carefully we're going somewhere there is a weakness in men when they step into a realm of results something happens to them the bible says they can forget they do not forget because they are evil they forget because they are human hallelujah it is easy to make all kinds of vows and covenants with god lord if you lift me i promise that the nations will see me if you prosper me prosper my children make all things to work well for me but something there there seems to be a weakness in all men that if god does not help you to tame that weakness it can cut short your impact so when men begin to rise when convenience begins to come into your life when god begins to give you a name as a man of god when god multiplies your voice amplifies your impact gradually it's a subtle indoctrination it doesn't happen in one day it's a programming it's, it's a it's, it's like a seduction that happens to you you begin to convince yourself that honestly without me God's program cannot go forward you begin to convince yourself it is at that point you become an enemy of God because if there is anything I know about God he's passionate about being revealed and glorified in the world of men and if anyone becomes an interruption to that agenda I assure you you become an enemy of the cross are we together so to remind you that if you celebrate 40 years of impact and you watch a matriarch like our mother still walking in humility and giving God praise after 40 years it is worthy of commendation there are people who cannot last two years of experiencing results it becomes a cost to them the reason why God does not seem to answer the prayer of many people is not because his hands cannot be stretched you have been weighed in the spirit and God has seen that lifting you will become a cost to you so he will rather peg your growth until he prunes the tendencies of pride until he prunes the tendencies of taking his place who is learning tonight it is true let me tell you this as a secret by the message of God I understand a few things about prayer every time you pray on an issue again and again and you bind you cast you do everything people agree with you and that situation does not change it is not demonic again 
there is something in you that needs to be corrected for the answer maybe this is a word for someone you have given you did not increase you were diligent you did not increase oil was laid on you hands were laid on you stop casting the devil go back to God and say walk on me that weakness you are taming by my delay walk on me so that it will give me liberty are we together it is true it is God that knows the tendencies that are enshrined within our hearts and he must there is a posture that a believer must carry perpetually to last now I show you a secret and then we'll pray I want to show you one of the ways that God helps men the psalmist said I will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he says from whence cometh my help he says my help not our help I don't know where yours comes from but my help cometh from the Lord the maker of the heavens and the earth let me show you a mystery this mystery has been responsible for the longevity of many people in ministry in business in career and I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that God will open your eyes that you will engage this mystery for your profiting and that for the rest of your life you believe that shout a loud amen, amen. Isaiah chapter 40 please let's go to verse 28 we're doing three verses Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28 the Bible starts by saying has thou not known and has thou not heard that the everlasting God pay attention now he's talking about God the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not take note now he's introducing the subject of weariness but he's saying in discussing that subject let us settle it first and foremost that there is one who is exempted from that limitation by reason of who he is I'm about to talk about a subject but he's saying so that you do not think it's a weakness that befalls all men that God is exempted from this limitation he fainted not neither is weary he says there is no searching of his understanding so he expects you to get that as a preamble now that you understand that God is not weak and does not faint he tells you something about the world of men verse 29 he giveth power to the faint so there is hope for everyone who faints he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength is someone learning tonight then he introduces something that is a weakness to all men it doesn't matter who you are once you find yourself in flesh and blood this weakness will eventually catch up with you if you do not know how to circumvent your way above it the weakness is in verse 30 even the youth shall faint not may faint shall faint it's not a cause he's revealing something that was programmed with the fallen nature that, that it is it is part and parcel of the human nature the youth shall faint and be weary the young men shall utterly fall he talks of fainting he talks of weariness verse 30 please back up to verse 30 again fainting weariness and even falling but then he tells us there is a way out but they not but all but they not everyone will be interested in engaging this mystery but they that wait upon the Lord the Bible says a few things will begin to happen to those they that they will renew their strength that even though they are human and based on the law that limits human nature they should fall they should faint but that they have found a system in the spirit that causes them to mount up with wings as the eagles that they shall run and when you are expecting them to be exhausted as all humans should be 
by a mystery that God is revealing here, you will never find them exhausted. That they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. If that looks like you, shout a loud amen. amen. It means that in as much as we are humans, in as much as we are limited by this frame called the body, the Bible says you can outsource intelligence and engage a mystery that even after 30 years you will still be standing in ministry standing in business when others are falling like a pack of cards even though you are human godlike results will be manifested through your life and that when men ask you don't you get tired don't you get exhausted you will tell them i'm in every way human but i have found out that they that wait upon the lord something happens to them remember the bible says if you fall or faint or turn aside in the day of battle the diagnosis is a strength problem that every time you are afraid of moving forward if anything affects your continuity it is a strength problem and the bible says it is human to gas out it is human to lose strength for various reasons the enmity and the wickedness of men is enough to exhaust you in this life that the fact that you are making progress, men can be used by the devil and they can become blockades to your moving forward. Why are you the only one rising in this office? Why are you the only one rising? Daniel, you are not the only one in Babylon. Let's, let's probe the reason why Daniel does not seem to be exhausted. And a whole parliament sat down to discuss a matter so it affects one man. So the man cannot continue. There are many reasons why we are weak. There are many reasons why we faint. One of it is because of the reality of the world that we live in. The Bible says our world is surrounded with evil. That the whole world lieth in wickedness. You don't have to look for anyone's trouble. Once you are born and once God begins to show you mercy, it is enough to attract antagonism from everywhere. Is it only your children who will rise and be shining? Is it only you who will be rising? Men for you. What was the crime of Jesus that he was hated by the scribes and the Pharisees? You would think that if they really loved men, they should be happy about someone who would be executing their agenda but they were angry you know the source of their anger that the whole city's attention had been turned to jesus and they said let's do something about this man it first started as subtle antagonism until they got to a point where they wanted him to die so hard they were willing to bring out a terrorist and release that terrorist back into town provided it to help jesus die let me tell you the truth there's something about the world of men when you succeed consistently it can attract envy it can attract jealousy it can attract antagonism and because you are human there is only so much you can fight in the flesh one day you become exhausted is the reason why people commit suicide is the reason why people get angry is the reason why many fold their boots in ministry and say you know what i'm tired of all this trouble as a man of god you know what it means to begin a work and then you labor you labor you push all kinds of betrayals all kinds of disappointment here after 10 15 20 years you feel like wrapping it up in ministry even the youth shall faint. The signature of a young man is his strength. He says, I write to you young men because you are strong. And yet in spite of that human strength, people can be exhausted. There are people today who are due for promotion, but simply because of some kinds of sentiments, their promotions can be pegged for a very long time. And let me tell you, as humans, you can become exhausted. One of the most comforting scripture in the Bible is John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus wept. Life wept. Strength wept. Vision wept. Faith wept. God wept. 
He never cried as God, but when he became a man, he wept. There are two reasons according to scripture why Jesus wept. The first was love and compassion. In fact, all were love and compassion, but the scenario was different. John 11, he was standing in front of Lazarus' tomb and he wept. And the Bible says, they said, oh, how he loved him. The second time Jesus wept, he looked over Jerusalem and saw people moving like sheep without shepherd. And the Bible says he wept and lifted up his voice and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if only you had known in this day the things that pertain unto your peace. He says, but they are hidden from you. Jesus wept because of compassion. He also wept because of the ignorance of men. Let me show you people in the Bible who were weary. There was a man called Abraham. The one who would become the patriarch. Are we together now? Abraham became weary because he waited for years. Waited for a child. Sarah became weary. And at a point, Abraham, I'm sure that Abraham had just given up and said, God, you know what? Use somebody in my house to raise me a child. And God said, no, you will have your own child from you. Let me show you another man who was exhausted in scripture. A man who laid down for 38 years at a pool called Bethesda. One of the few men who the Bible records the longevity of their pain. I'm sure by the first year when the man got there, he took for granted that by maybe one or two years, I will be out of this place. Two years in pain became five years, became a decade, became 15 years, became 20 years. I'm sure someone encouraged him and said, don't worry, this year for sure, you will be out. 25 became 30. 30 became 35. 36, 37, 38. When Jesus came to him and said, why are you in this condition? The man said, don't, don't waste my time. Listen, um, I've been in this condition for a long time. How about the woman with the issue of blood? One of the synoptic accounts tell us that Jesus was on his way to go and heal the centurion's daughter remember she was 12 years of age and she was about to die and while he was on his way going there was a woman who was also 12 years that means the day that young girl who died was born that was the day this woman's problem too started they were all 12 years one was about to lose his daughter the other was saying listen it is an issue of my health There are times that people go through pain. There are times that people go through tragic situations. There are times that people go through unfavorable situations. But let's look at a few things and then we'll pray. If God is helping you and speaking to you, shout a loud amen. amen. So the first information we get from Isaiah 40, and please pay attention now. The strategy that helps you to obtain help, giving you longevity in life. That even though you are human, you are able to conquer the limitations of weariness, the limitations of fatigue, the limitations of exhaustion, and you continue until you finish your race. You will finish strong. I prophesy to someone you will finish strong in the name of Jesus Christ. So number one, the first information we learn from that scripture, Isaiah 40, is that God does not faint and God is not weary, not as God. When he became a man in Christ, he was tired. Jesus slept because he was tired. Jesus was hungry, he was exhausted. All of these human limitations were very evident in the life of Jesus when he became a man. But as God, the Bible says God does not faint. It is hopeful for us to know that. Scripture puts it in a very beautiful way that the keeper of Israel that he does not sleep, he does not slumber. Isn't that amazing? There is no exhaustion with God. Number two, the Bible gives us an information that whoever faints needs power. When you find yourself fainting emotionally, fainting spiritually, fainting in, in every area of your life, what you are in need of is power. And that whoever has no might what God does to such a one is to increase strength. Then he tells us that all men, even the youth, 
and the young men will faint and be weary and even utterly fall fall in ministry fall in life fall in destiny fall in career but then he says 31 they that wait upon the Lord someone shout I will wait one more time say I will wait they that wait upon the Lord the Bible says they shall renew their strength now what does it mean to wait upon the Lord seeing then that strength renewal revitalization is connected to this mystery that means the mystery of sustainable impact void of weariness void of exhaustion that as the years come so your energies sustained and multiplied the Bible says the mystery that controls that kind of outcome in a believer is called waiting upon the Lord what does it mean to wait upon the Lord waiting upon the Lord is beyond prayer and fasting most times when we say I'm waiting upon the Lord we say that to mean I'm on a fast and while there is an expression of that there waiting upon the Lord uh, is, is way beyond just prayer and fasting hallelujah I'll give you three definitions and then we'll pray number one to wait upon the Lord means to look unto Jesus it is a description of total dependence a state of total dependence waiting upon the Lord number one suggests having this consciousness that if God does not help me if God does not open a door for me if God does not become an anchor and strength and help for me by the strength of the flesh I will not be able to do much waiting upon the Lord is beyond just praying and fasting it starts with an orientation is someone learning now you are waiting upon the Lord when you number one sustain this orientation that it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed and that by the strength of the flesh no matter how dexterous and no matter how competent you are eventually you will gas out eventually you will be weary someone say I will wait I will wait means that I declare in advance that I am helpless outside of the help of God I declare in advance that my education as important as it is has limitations in the world of men that my skill my expertise my knowledge are we together now everything that constitutes an advantage in my life will eventually be frail they that wait upon the Lord We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Don't sing, just listen to what I'm singing. This is what it means to wait. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. forever Yahweh Yahweh listen if you can turn this song to a mentality then you have learned how to wait it is beyond a special number it is an orientation you must carry for the rest of your life I look unto you like a maid looks unto her mistress for help Lord, if you do not help me, I cannot go beyond this place. Some trust in horses and others trust in chariots. He said, but we will trust in the name of our God. It is one of the things that I learned very early in ministry. That the strength of men eventually fails them. Even warriors run under a certain condition. They run away from battle. The nation of Israel having warriors... They got to a point where Goliath of God stood before them and he said, King Saul, bring me a man to fight me. Every day he kept coming and the Bible says their strength failed them. 
the warriors were afraid there are things that confront you in this life that even if you are Elijah you will run away to hide so I look to Yahweh Yahweh that's what it means to wait number one my hope is Yahweh Yahweh I look to Yahweh Yahweh forever Yahweh Yahweh Apostle my own challenge is that I need thirty thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars to go and continue my postgraduate abroad I don't have a father I don't have a mother yet every time I go to bed I see myself as a PhD holder I see myself as a professor from one of the Ivy League universities colleges abroad how is this going to happen let me tell you they looked onto him my Bible says and their faces were lightened provided you can look beyond your pay Peter if you keep looking at the sea you will sink but if you look on to Jesus one step after the other you will find out that you are able to walk on water we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh yes we sure that if we call our mother out and tell her please tell us the story the journey of this ministry she will tell you that there were times that she stood and said God you are my only help if you do not lead me I have nowhere to go there is something I know about God he likes the sound of surrender and dependence he likes the sound of surrender and dependence Hallelujah. My dear friend and brother is here, Pastor Shola. We were talking about it this morning. He woke up like every other preacher, happy to start a conference and had even done videos inviting people. And about a few hours to the conference, the entire church was gutted by fire. Not a single chair was taken out of it. I'm sure, I'm sure you all saw it. There is something about God when you know, ba, even when you cry, you will still say, I know that there is an end to this. That your tears will no longer be tears of hopelessness. You will cry because you are human, but you will still be singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs as the tears come. Ah, you, you, you know that though he slay me, yet will I trust him that all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. While the promise is still coming, I will wait. I will wait as I believe him. I've not seen my dreams and visions come to pass. Lord, I know what you told me last year. I know what you told me in January. I know I, I thought by now that certain things would have happened in your life, in my life. But even now, I still wait upon you. I look unto you. Because thou art the fountain of life. It is in your life that we see light. Someone lay your hands on your head in one minute. And say, Father, the grace to look unto you. The grace to depend on you. Someone is praying. A serious believer is praying. I look unto you. I may cry, but I will wait on you. I may weep, but I will wait on you. It may tell on my human nature, but I will wait. It pays to wait. It pays to look unto Jesus. In Jesus' name, please be seated. Apostle Paul began to teach us in Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1. Here's what he says. Seeing then, that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses he says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us 
then he says to run with patience or with perseverance the race that is set before us i like verse 2 looking on to jesus this is how to run such that you win looking on to jesus he calls him the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him that he endured the cross he despised the shame and is today set at the right hand of god can i tell you something no matter what you are going through today hear it from me it has an end the bible says surely there is an end there is absolutely nothing that is new under the sun let me speak a word of hope for someone the thing that was is the thing that is and is the thing that is to come there is nothing new under the sun rent issue it is not new looking for the fruit of the womb it is not new looking for a spouse it is not new weeping over someone who has transited it is not new trusting god to pay your rent it is not new trusting god to own your home it is not new trusting god to be a graduate is not new everything that you see that you desire has happened to someone before and the bible says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise you are not the first to start ministry you are not the first to desire longevity in ministry you are not the first to desire the fruit of the womb you are not the first to desire a spouse you are not the first to desire a job it has happened before and there were people who triumphed over it he says hear my cry O lord attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth will i call unto you that when my heart is overwhelmed he says lead me to the rock there is a rock that is higher than i that rock is jesus that rock is jesus that when men look unto him their faces become lighted please be seated so waiting upon the Lord number one refers to an orientation, a mentality of total dependence. You can fast and pray, but not with a mentality that knows that if God does not help me, I cannot go further. You did not wait upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord does not start with an activity. It starts with an orientation. An orientation an orientation God if you do not help me there is no way out total dependence I like how Proverbs chapter 3 puts it from verse 5 to 7 here's what it says trust in the Lord abundant life hear me trust in the Lord the Bible says with all your heart it says and lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways how many in all your ways acknowledge him the word acknowledge is a very important word. Acknowledge does not mean to recognize him. To place so much priority on him that he knows that without him you cannot move further. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. But they that wait upon the Lord is a mysterious strategy that has bailed many weak people out of life's vicissitudes hallelujah still speaking about pastor shola you need to go back and take a visit in that church and you will know that god reigns over the affairs of men i believe that god used that event to speak a message to the body of christ that it doesn't matter where you find yourself regretting over where you are will not solve the problem but he told abraham he said lift up your eyes even you if your feet cannot get there your eyes can go there lift up your eyes from where you are not where you want to be from where thou art take your eyes northward southward eastward westward he said, as far as your eyes can see i have given unto you as an inheritance Hallelujah. To look unto Jesus. To have an orientation that my entire life's journey depends on the supply of grace and help that comes from Him. 
is the first thing the Bible refers to as waiting upon the Lord. Number two, what does it mean 